once when we were cooking in Delhi, hmm. the cops came because the neighbors complained and said we were cooking dog meat. Okay? Oh, what? And please try this gluten free. I'll have some in a while. I'll have in a while. No, no one's interested in gluten free <laughs> bread, clearly. Are you um, allergic to gluten? I'm just being fancy. <laughs> Welcome to Lunchbox with Midday. This is a series where Midday takes two known people from Mumbai out for lunch and we get to know the people behind the public persona. We're at Loki and Toot in Khar today and we have with us two supremely funny women. Supriya, Superwoman. Uh, she's a content creator, a stand-up comedian, uh, a vlogger, a makeup enthusiast and a BTS fan. Uh, we also have with us Marinla M. Song. Marinla is also a content creator, a stand-up comedian, a writer, actor and an aspiring cult leader. Wow. Welcome to Lunchbox, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Happy to be here. Uh, before we start off, uh, Supriya, you were telling me you have a fun fact about midday. So, oh. do you want to share? Of course. So, my fun fact about midday is that my first job ever was at midday. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, I was an intern huh. um, at midday, the web uh, part of it. Hmm. So, yeah, I worked there for like three, two, three months. Oh, okay. How long ago was this? Uh, well, it was a while back. <laughs> Let's just say, not last year. Yeah. You know, I know I'm very young, but it's been a while. Nice. Let's just nice. <laughs> nice recall. Yeah. So yeah, it was. Uh, I think this is a what say, full circle moment. How yeah. sweet. Yeah. yeah. But I feel very happy. To <laughs> so um, you know, I thought that before we talk about you guys, um, I know that you guys have known each other. Right? I saw some videos. Yeah, so, how do you it. guys uh, know each other and for how long have you guys known each other? We have known we, each other. We met each other at that stand up. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Then, and then I wanted to go to the bar. Two comedians walk into a stand up uh, bar. Is that it? <laughs> we, were, we were both in line. We were, we were going to perform. Hmm. <laughs> and I had eaten something which didn't suit me. Hmm. And I had to rush to the loo. Okay. And, we have like this, and literally the first thing I said to her is like, "Where's the butter? I think I'm about to have diarrhea." <laughs> she just looked at me. She's like, "Yeah, you just the, there is something, something." And I ran away after that. Oh my god! Yeah, that was our first interaction. Yeah. So we've known each other through stand up, yeah. and uh, there's one show that I was hosting, and she was also on the lineup of that show. Yeah. And, and there were, I think, three audience members. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was fun. It was a uh, even though there were three members in the audience, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> there were more comics than there uh, were more uh, comics on the lineup than there were uh, audiences there to watch us. One of them was her friend. One of them was my friend. So <laughs> and I think the third person was the person who owned, owned the, the place. place. <laughs> <laughs> or something, you know? yeah. yeah. So and then we've been talking to each other online. Yeah. Then finally we met again now uh, at an event that had happened yeah. recently. Yeah, yeah, and then we ended up making a video. Also. Then you made a yeah, video, that. and we that were, was fun. Yeah, we, we met and we were just like, we're two old people complaining. We're like <laughs> filled with young people. Oh, yeah. okay? There were too many young people. Yeah. Too and many. Then, <laughs> and it was, it was like two uncles meeting and complaining about the youth. Yeah, these young people. I know these young people. Oh, yeah, young people, young people. <laughs> and then we're like, let's make a video making fun of the young people. <laughs> yes, yes, let's do yeah, we've yeah. become uh, who we feared <laughs> we would never become. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of young people, I thought uh, let's do some throwback. Uh, so, Merinla, you know, you've uh, had quite a journey. You were uh, a science stopper in Nagaland. Yeah. yeah. And then you studied zoology in Delhi. Yeah. And from there, I think there were some plans of uh, joining the civil services also. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you turned all of that uh, on its head and landed in Mumbai and became an all-around funny person. <laughs> so, uh, you want to like tell me how, how that came about? So, I was always good in studies. And then, so everyone was just like, Doctor, doctor. My mom was like, doctor, 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 and then every, and the, but then I didn't become a doctor. So they were like, okay, civil servant, IAS officer, IAS officer, or oh, definitely IAS officer, you know. And because everyone would just come and tell you that, so you also start believing, you know. 
I remember my my dad took me to meet a grandma once, and she decided to pray for me. And then she was praying, and then and let her become an IAS officer. She prayed, okay. And I remember in the middle of the prayer, my eyes opened. I was like, usually you grant they, they pray for your good health, for your honor, but very specifically IAS officer. And she repeated it twice, and I was like, do I really want to become an IAS officer? You know, I got so scared. You know. But then that didn't happen, so yeah, she must have been very disappointed. Mm-hmm. I was doing my masters also because okay. yeah, because I finished graduation, I was too lazy to work and I was too confused what to do with my life. So when you're confused, you just end up picking up another degree. Yeah, yeah, just like nice excuse, you know, to chill in Delhi and all of that. My cousin's wedding happened when it happened in the UK. Now the whole family can't go, so they send one representative to go, and then I was that one representative. <laughs> okay. And I went when I went and met my cousin's parents. They were like, "But so you want to become a, a civil servant?" I was like, "Yes." And but then my face made there was there was just it didn't, there was no conviction. You know, they're like, "Why do you want to become a civil servant?" I was like, uh, "Because I want to become a civil servant." <laughs> <laughs> then my uncle said, "You're not cut out for this. Like you should you should entertain people. You love doing that." Like how much bakwas have you done ever since you got here? <laughs> said, you know, that's all you've been doing because you enjoy doing that. So you leave this and you do that. Hmm. So then, with full conviction, I came back and I was like, I am no longer going to become IAS Why officer. Why these uncles and aunties? Yeah, we need more of I them yeah. in our lives. Yeah, I mean, it's such a reverse Uno card yeah. thing. And my dad came and he's like complaining to my mom, saying that what. Ati has your your cousin's husband put in our child. Look at this. Look what she wants. But then, uh, and, and they thought it was a phase. They're like, uh, I want to become an actor. Ha, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha, yeah, yeah. You become actor. Become actor. You know. And they were both like, yeah. Give her a year, and then she'll come back saying like, yes, I'm gonna study and prepare and all of that stuff. But uh, the phase never stopped. It just continued. And now they just what to do they just shake their heads and they're like yeah this is her life this is what she enjoys doing like, but this is something you always enjoy like since you were a kid now my parents they joke about it when people ask like what does your daughter do she's a comedian right and he's like she's a joker <laughs> joker ka kaam joker ka kaam yeah and then and like you know people they're like no that's not how you say and he's like joker joker that's it a profession joker you know <laughs> that's it so your parents still think you're in a phase is it no now they, they now they like yeah they they, okay. they don't I, but my parents that way have never been interfering. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've never pressured me to do anything. They're yeah. like, yeah, you do whatever. Just like as long as you're not killing people, you're fine. You know, and all of yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Low standard. <laughs> yeah, very <laughs> low standard. Really. Yeah. What about you, uh, Supriya? Uh, did you always know that you, uh, you know, wanted to crack jokes and make a living out of it? Uh, no, because I don't think anybody. I'm actually wait. I think very few people from their childhood they understand ki this is a path I want to ch- take in my life which is I want to be a comedian no matter what that was not me I've always been pretty like doing just going in a straight line but I always knew I'm I'm funny I knew it like there there's something about me that I do like I I like to be the center of attention I like uh, making jokes I like making people laugh but I never thought that that is something that it can become a career for anyone especially not me after college I'm trying to figure out what do i want to do with my life that's when midday happened <laughs> and then uh, a job after job us all 9 to 5 uh, my last technical 9 to 5 job was at better photography i was a writer and a photographer there and uh, which is around that time when wine had come uh, wine was uh, pretty huge it was such a great platform yeah for no reason other than entertaining myself i started making these wine videos and they started going pretty viral in india and people started noticing them and uh, watch them and i had no idea about i had no intentions of ever making that anything i just did that because it made me laugh and i think I, if i make myself laugh my job is done uh, which is when tanmay bhat uh, started messaging me and yeah. like you're so funny and all and this is around 2016 when uh, he asked if i would like to work at aib and that was my break into comedy as a career because before that who knew that this is <laughs> this is something you can make money from and all so 2016 i started working at aib 2017 a stand up comedian rohan desai uh, aib was having uh, its first open mic ever 
and Rohan Desai was he forcefully put my name on the list. He said, "I want you to do this," and I'm like, "Are you kidding me? Like, I I don't think I can just tell jokes on the stage. I mean, I can make you laugh because you're my friend. I don't think I can go on stage and tell a joke and make many people laugh." It's like, don't worry, go on stage. Don't say a single joke and come back. But I want you to go on the stage. Do that. So that forced me to write my first set. And then fourteenth uh, February, twenty seventeen, on Valentine's Day, I got on the stage, and I freaking killed it, man! I <laughs> I don't know how that happened. That some energy came inside of me or something. I had a great time. People were going mad. It was a huge room of like I think more than two hundred people were there in that room. That because it was also AIB's first. Right. I couldn't believe it. Like after that, I I did so well. Like. But yeah, that's the thing that uh, set the ball rolling for me, and uh, it gave me the courage to make decisions which are slightly off center for any woman, you know, yeah. who is uh, in India. Once this money start coming, starts coming in, then parents are also like, "Thik hai." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. okay. It's about to ask. Were your parents cool with the idea? Uh, when I quit my first job mm-hmm. is when uh, they were a little worried. Um, Because I just went out on a whim. Because I, because actually not a whim, I was in a very dead end job. This is not midday. <laughs> I was in a dead end job, and um, I I was just a zombie at that time. And I saw Wake Up Sid, and I was like, Oh my God, huh. this is it. This is what I want. And I have like I still have that diary entry that I'd written on the day I saw that movie, and I'd written Supriya, you can do much better than what you're doing now, doing right now, and. Just follow your heart, whatever. I wrote a whole letter to myself. Next day, I got an email from this photographer in Delhi, uh, and they said that they're looking for an intern in Time Out Delhi. I'm like, bye. I'm quitting this job. I am leaving, and I just went off like that because I knew this was meant to be. So yeah, when that happened, that's when my parents were like, but I, I had enough savings at that point. I never spent anything on myself, and Delhi, I have. a family there as well so they were not so worried but the, now though like they just like whatever if you are happy we are happy that's your mom's a part of many of your videos too yeah yeah i mean uh, sometimes she agrees sometimes i have to force her <laughs> there's no other way the <laughs> whole family mix yeah yeah appearances. my whole because that's how we've grown up like uh-huh. our whole our entire family has a sense of humor mm-hmm. they are all funny mm-hmm. and their own ways they are all funny they are not even trying to be funny i think my father is the funniest man <laughs> and he's not even trying to be uh, funny so you pick up these things mm-hmm. from everyone and in your family or the people around you and it becomes your own right like no matter how for all comedians it is so that's where you get all your perspective and comedy from i know i can be free and light because that's how my parents have been with us your parents both your uh, parents are actually shining examples <laughs> of uh, you know good parents i mean they, you should uh, let your kid work with yeah yeah, yeah i think to. we both owe a lot to our parents for <laughs> now yeah my parents have never even they've never even bothered to try to get me married also <laughs> Well, they tried once. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. they were like, okay. I, I. Once, <laughs> it was an experience for sure. <laughs> they tried once. I said, I'm only doing this because you have been after my life. I want to prove to you that this is not going to work out. Huh. So I went. I met the guy. Had the most embarrassing experience. And then I came home. I said, Ma, done. <laughs> this was the first and the last. If something <laughs> this is not going to work. Your matchmaking services sucks. I'm sorry. You got a great and everything, not a great matchmaker. Please don't try. That's it. That was the end of that. So, in your family too, uh, did you like were your parents humorous naturally? Did you pick up stuff from them? Yeah, yeah, they were. Uh, my dad is loud and boisterous. Mm-hmm. He loves to crack jokes. Every opportunity is always trying to get a punchline in and all of that. That's his uh, favorite pastime. And my mom's super sarcastic. Very, very sarcastic. She can, with the, and she says it with a straight face. Not even she doesn't try to be funny, and that's that makes her even funnier. Yeah, with my dad, he's like trying to be funny, and like he does all these physical stuff and all that. With my mom, it's just deadpan humor, and it's just it's hilarious. Yeah. Did you guys uh, grow up with siblings or uh, or by yourselves? Are you guys? Yeah, I have, I have a younger sister. sister yeah. I have a younger brother. We tried to kill each other a lot of times. <laughs> Unsuccessful attempts. Yeah, a lot of comedy also comes from there. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 
your uh, shared trauma <laughs> comedy comes from shared trauma yes. so <laughs> but my sister and i have a very good relationship since our childhood only mm. we've barely for i can't remember fighting with her because we understood each other's trauma so much <laughs> like i cannot add on to that anymore <laughs> nor can she add it to me so we had that nice so i hope all that talking has uh, gotten you hungry yeah should we order yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah, I'm the one burger. Yeah, I'm not a burger fan. I don't like burgers. I feel they're too bread, more too much bread. I love bread, but I don't know why I'm not a big fan of yeah, burgers. Uh, it's also messy. I, mean, I don't know. I just that's the beauty of a burger. <laughs> so, oh yes. Um, can I have the buckwheat pita bread and lavash? This oven baked chicken with uh, mushroom sauce. With skin or without the skin? The chicken with the skin, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah with skin. <laughs> I'll have the burrata caponata toast. So let's add chicken, and can you make it on gluten free bread? Yeah, sure, you can do that. I'll have that, and um, I'll have a ca- uh, cafe latte, and I shall have the pressed pan seared chicken and mm. spicy sweet. One Moroccan flatbread. Uh, yeah, the spicy chicken one. uh my mouth is salivating already <laughs> very excited you guys were talking about your journey into comedy but you guys have also since uh gone online and become content creators what something that intrigues me a lot and i'm sure a lot of people who follow you had this question as well mm-hmm. uh what is a day like in the life of a content creator where do you look for ideas what inspires you anything can inspire you yeah. <laughs> the way yeah it's like you're showering and then you're like ah, no. <gasps> oh, oh 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 and then you're like Shh. and then you walk out and then like you you start noting down yeah sometimes you're like i'm going to work today you open your notebook and half an hour later you're just staring yeah. staring at ceiling staring at cobweb you know so <laughs> there's no routine as such but some people do have huh? like all these hustler instagrammers they have like like in uh, they take out like a, a day a whole day a week to just shoot content the entire day that they keep posting through the week you, have you ever done something like that no for me if i have an idea and then i write it I, i'm too excited yeah i have to shoot that right now. and pull it up immediately yeah, right yeah. like that's how that's how you and i am like i don't care if i've done this at like 10 pm and nobody is watching it at 10 pm like no 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 i have this great idea i have to put it out i'm uh, i guess a disorganized person when it comes to stuff like that but and that's why i don't even call myself a content creator because i just i think i just exist on the internet like that's that's it i mean i make stuff that is funny sometimes or whatever it i like i put but uh, the definition of content creator these days is very different from that's true you were just saying that the hustler yeah. influencer was is what what how would you guys identify yourselves as person on the internet like <laughs> for me that is that's it i'm a com- okay i'm a comedian on the internet okay. i make content when it strikes me mm. because i don't think i can make content just to make content like in the middle i had done that just to mess around with the algorithm a little bit i didn't enjoy it at all i hated it like doing trends and stuff like that and i mean yeah sure you can make it your own you could put your own spin to things that's fun as well but if it that that becomes just your identity then who are you you are yeah. the same as every third person on yeah. uh the internet so who what makes you different in a few months maybe a year, i don't know when people will come out of this rut also or mm-hmm. uh, viewers rather viewers will come out of this rut of seeing the same thing all the time and they want something different nobody watches yeah. Yeah. longer longer than 15 seconds anymore so our attention spans have gone down so much hope i'm think it's all an ebb and flow we'll come back to that as well so i don't know when but it'll happen how do you identify yourself as a Awesome. No, like now you've given me so much existential questions. <laughs> like, am I a content creator or am I a person on the internet? <laughs> I have a notebook. Front page of the notebook is just filled with ideas, just like the 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 the. And then, but then then I have to flesh them out into proper videos. Yeah. And sometimes I write these ideas. I don't even know what they mean. I was going through my list, and there was one called Vegan Vampire. And I was like, Wow. Vegan? 
क्या है लाइक व्हाट वाज आई थिंकिंग व्हाई व्हाई कुंद आई पुट सम एक्स्ट्रा नोट्स बिकॉज़ नाउ आई जस्ट लुक एट वीगन वैम्पायर एंड आई डोंट नो व्हाट आई वाज थिंकिंग व्हेन आई गोट दैट स्किन वैम्पायर किल्स फॉर ओट मिल्क बी ट्रूथ यस द ओनली सिमिलरिटी बिटवीन वीगन वैम्पायर एंड एन एक्चुअल वैम्पायर is that they are both allergic to garlic they don't like garlic this is all discussed here you heard about vegan vampire on yeah, lunch box copyright melon yes. do not uh, do not copy this idea vampires out there deciding to turn <laughs> vegan i'm sorry i've already <laughs> stolen your idea dracula is writing to you as we speak oh uh, like you said there are trends and people are constantly keeping up with trends they are yeah. putting their own trend on trends mm-hmm. uh does it ever happen to you that when you go to sleep instagram songs are playing in your all head all the time all the time like love nuantiti is playing in my head right now it's not it's just not left me that song i i i think up of ideas in my sleep <laughs> But you know what's the worst? Mm. When you are just about to go to sleep and you get this brilliant idea, oh. and then you're like, "Oh my God, this is so amazing! I'll remember it when I wake up. I have to write it down." And you never remember what yes. that idea was, yes. but you remember it was a great idea. Yeah. I hate that. So because you know you're so comfortable, you do not want to move. It's that per- you've hit the perfect spot, yeah. and I think that's why you get that good idea because you you've reached the perfect position to have the perfect sleep. Yeah, that's why you get the perfect idea. Yeah. and then you perfectly think <laughs> that you will remember it in the morning uh, no yeah. i think we what we should do is we should have a record voice recorder next to us as soon as we go to, like lie down to sleep just press play yeah and then you like bah, 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 bah. <laughs> we can do it <laughs> and i try to decipher what you said the next morning For me, it's more the dreams. In the dream, I have an idea, and in my dream also, I'm like, "This is such a great idea." When I wake up, I'm going to shoot this video idea. Then I wake up and like, "Ha, kuch sabda tha, something was there." Oh God, I But, hate yeah. that. I yeah, hate yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you all have any guinea pigs at home? You try out stuff on, or like test your yeah. material on? Everyone around me. Anyone? Anyone? Yeah. Who is going to give me two minutes of their time? So, yeah. especially if it's someone whose opinion, like who. for you who is someone whose opinion values a lot like for content yeah, yeah. so for me it's my sister okay so oh. if i'm telling her listen i have this great idea la 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 and her face is just like that's the worst then you are you just you just yeah, die yeah. on the inside and the outside and then like okay i guess it wasn't that great nahi nahi main sun rahi hu na to bata na aage kya hota hai and you're like khatam ho gaya that was the punchline <laughs> <laughs> What do both of you prefer uh, having performed on stage mm-hmm. and creating content online mm-hmm. which gives you more joy So I'm terrified of performing live so I prefer making videos yeah. It's just too much anxiety yeah, yeah. You've yeah. talked about uh, I think taking a break sometimes between oh, yeah. your performances Oh so. yeah I do that all the time Yeah I'm on a break right now in fact I don't usually perform during the monsoons because it gets so hard to travel and shows sometimes get cancelled so i just take it easy at this time i prefer to work on my material right now mm-hmm. having done both i think they both give you different satisfaction mm-hmm. the gratification of being on stage mm-hmm. is instant like if my joke has worked and people have laughed i get that high immediately mm-hmm. and if a joke has tanked or it's not worked what can i do immediately to get the audience back mm-hmm. that's completely your uh, this thing it's yeah. on you you mm-hmm. own 100% of whatever has happened at that time online you have about 50% stake 50% instagram ka bhi hota hai like if they are showing your content blah blah internet blah, rubbish like that is 50% instagram or whatever and 50% me some things really don't work online some things work mm-hmm. something wasn't timed correctly maybe it would have worked 2 years later maybe it would work 2 years back be like you don't know so i personally prefer being on stage mm-hmm. but also my aim or uh, as i mentioned before to make stuff online never was to ma- build an audience or become super famous or popular it was just to make videos that made me laugh at, mm-hmm. and so this pain is not that much but if i if i bomb entirely on stage the from a to z that hurts <laughs> a lot more mm-hmm.
you know both of you have also done a lot of content or in your own ways spoken out against a lot of toxicity be it body shaming be it discrimination i'm sure that must have come from a space of personal experience and you found somehow a way to turn that into something funny and poignant uh you guys want to tell me a little bit about your experiences that way and also if when you are planning content around it do you guys think how okay this is how i should be putting my voice out there and making sure that this idea is heard and understood you know what you when you make these videos you don't really make them with the whole i will make a change in society aaj mai ye video dalungi <laughs> and then yeah the world will you know hmm. you know you just like something annoying happened to you and you're like you just annoyed and then you just decide to put it out on paper or you or it's in the back of your head someone said something weird or something and it and then you're like hey instead of thinking about what that person said let me just transform it into paper yeah, yeah. Hmm. but i think the most important thing is not to be angry when you're writing it down not to be because if you're already angry then there's a lot of hate that's going to come out but okay. see it from a comedic uh, lens you know see it from a funny perspective you know so that so that you can also watch it and laugh yeah. i'm sure that's difficult right i mean is it a constant reminder that you've give to yourself especially since like you've said before that you face a certain amount of culture hey, shock when you it's i think <laughs> at that moment you know you're very hurt and angry and then you forget about it hmm. yeah hmm. so like that i don't hold grudges for very long i have very bad memory so <laughs> <laughs> the grudges don't last that long then yeah. but don't you think anger is also a great fuel for uh, creativity anger but then i think it's not for me because then when i'm angry I, it just becomes very depressive does it take humor. over comedy yeah it or, takes over hmm. the comedic aspect you know it's just i don't want it to become an emotional rant or something like that so if i'm writing a post about something that's happened if it's a rant then just keep it as a rant if it's comedy and keep it comedy you know i don't like mixing comedy and ranting together i it's actually very different from me because anger is a fuel for me because when you when i am angry um, at something instead of in- instantly lashing out in anger it makes me think what's the best way i can give something back to mm-hmm. someone you know having grown up and hearing so many things about you and uh, being bullied for x amount of reasons i mentioned this recently i've been through the trenches now like i've done my share now now i've reached that point that nothing affects me anymore i'm completely retired from any form of shaming and that is an agency i do not give to anybody else it's on it's totally on me for 12 year old boy on the internet calls me moti today do i give him that agency to make me feel bad or remember the 12 year old boy who called me moti when i was 12 years old <laughs> i got i got over it so when i am making stuff bad talks about something like that yes it comes some some of it comes from a place of anger but i think it fuels me to think creatively mm-hmm. instead of making me just slash it because genuinely frankly no one cares <laughs> as much as you think people do no one cares everything is temporary and people move on to the next thing so if today i write essays about how somebody has body shamed me and it made me a better person blah 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 you will th- you will applaud me today and tomorrow the 12 year boy will call me moti again <laughs> it changes nothing as you said like you you don't never come with the intention ki i'm going to change moti will be erased from the dictionary that word doesn't exist anymore like that's not going to happen yeah. of course you can say a piece and move on and <laughs> that's how i i deal and that's how i make content if i do about that but sometimes i don't know it's just whatever it's uh, something made me laugh today or i thought about something it feels like it can be relatable to a lot of people also so just do that you guys get your fair share of trolling uh, up like what <laughs> yeah yeah it's how do you deal with that you know when you first look at it you you get angry but then you come back and you look at it and you, you just like you you end up some going to that person's profile like who's yeah. this <laughs> and then and then you see the person bro i said acha it makes sense <laughs> some of the comments don't even make sense the, the way people body shame you it's like they they're telling you something thinking that what they're saying is a revelation yeah yeah you know they, like the comments that say 
small chest, you know, they, as if like, like I read the comment and say small chest, oh, oh my goodness, I have so small chest, I have no idea. I, I was no. living my life so far yeah. with the idea of being big voluptuous. Yes, I thought I was Pamela Anderson, I am not, what is this, you know, like. <laughs> You know, that's it. Like, when you've lived through all of this, yeah, you, don't, you don't, doesn't matter anymore. It used, of course, it mattered before mm-hmm. when it had just started or when it was the first time ever you saw someone trolling you online. Of course, it matters then. But now it's so everyday, it's so n- casual. Yeah. And frankly, I've heard worse, like the yeah. possible worst things you can imagine. I've heard it. Mm-hmm. I've seen it all targeted towards me online. What's it's the, very disappointing also the co- the quality of the trolling you know it's, it's very basic English, English. Yeah. it's like it's like there are Thank you. Thank you. Good, good timing yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anger makes you hungry there has to be some polishing school for these trolls yeah I'm just <laughs> disappointed you have to crush me disappoint me yeah. instead I'm just disappointed at your comment yeah. like you can do so much I better. Mean, instead of calling me Moti, how about you call me insecure? I'll feel so yeah. bad. I'll yeah. I'll cry that night. Yeah. If if they call me insecure. Yeah. <laughs> but you chose the most basic basic thing you could call me. So yeah. come on, move. Let's try again. Have you ever tried engaging with any Many of these times. guys? Yeah, really. It's so much fun. <laughs> uh, can I just say one time this kid? Oh, I I'm pretty sure I was 12 years old. There's no other. <laughs> there's no other way. This kid, uh, he wrote something to the amount of a death threat, okay? Seriously, 12-year-old kid. Because I'm fat, so he wrote me a death threat and I'm going to come to your house and kill you or something like that. He's not even from Bombay. And I read that and I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I have to mess with this guy. Mm-hmm. I said, I've screenshotted this, I've sent it to the police. Oh. I've sent this to the police and uh, they're going to come arrest you anytime. That kid... He within like a min one minute he sent me one thousand messages saying I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry and I'm like no no I'm like uh, you are you really apologetic and he's like yes okay I want you to write two hundred times I'm sorry and I will not do this again on a notebook and send me picture of every page <laughs> otherwise this is going to the police he did it <laughs> by the end I said I want it by six p.m. tonight. <laughs> Otherwise, this is you are you are going to jail. You, and do you know what happens in juvenile court? You'll be you'll be gone. Your parents will be so disappointed in you. He wrote, "I am sorry. I will never do this again." Two hundred times, and he shared every picture. And he said, "Please don't test and tell the police." I'm like, uh, "Well, I'll I'll think about it." Wow, that's amazing. Sometimes that's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a creative uh, punishment in many ways. That has become a core memory in that boy's yeah, life. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. When he's going to be, when he's going to be twenty, he'll be like, "Oh my god, I can't believe I did that. I was so stupid." But <laughs> I remember when the whole um, the Armed Forces Special Powers Act situation was happening in Nagaland, yeah. and then I was tweeting about it. Well, you can't say anything against the armed forces in this country, is what I realized. Whoever just started trolling me, I just started calling them anti-national. <laughs> so I said, like, you are an anti-national, you are an insult to the country. So then it was confusing them <laughs> even more because you know, I was just like anti-national, anti-national and I just kept tweeting anti-national, you anti-national, no, 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 you anti-national, you know, and that was fun. Mm. Do you guys cook? Yes, all the time. Yeah, yours I have seen those khana khazana stories. Yeah. Have you been cooking like since childhood? Like um yeah, you can say. I used to cook for uh leisure. I always liked cooking. And uh, especially during the lockdown, it gave you an opportunity to really try things that you haven't before. So that's when I really realized, okay, actually I can cook beyond just pasta or beyond extremely basic things like that. This is just one thing I can't cook yet, which is roti. Very difficult, but I will try. <laughs> Can you make roti? Just rice. It's because roti is just too time consuming and I'm, I'm very hungry by the time. Yeah. yeah, I don't have the patience. But do you cook otherwise on a daily basis or? I do. I cook very uh, below average cook. I enjoy the process of eating more than cooking. 
you know and i have no patience i just want to finish cooking because i start getting very hungry when i'm cooking i'm just like when do i finish that i can just eat this you know yeah but uh, my friend said that My food is like hospital food. <laughs> so she she when she's sick she wants me to cook and send Ooh, food to her. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So that's comforting Com- or bland? I mean I'd like to say it's comforting <laughs> but I think it's bland. <laughs> yeah. Do you get uh, naga food around here? No, but then uh, I have all the ingredients in my fridge. Mm. So all the smelly stuff. Mm. Um it, it, the good thing is Bombay in general smells, yeah. you know. Awesome. So I can cook and then No one. No, no. I'll be like, yeah, Versova Beach, you know, the fish. <laughs> oh, you know, just like give an excuse, and no one knows. Did you have that similar experience in uh, Delhi too? Oh, Delhi too. Or was it Akuni all over? <laughs> once when we were cooking in Delhi, hmm. the cops came. Because the neighbors complained and said we were cooking dog meat. Okay? Oh, what? <laughs> oh, so those stories are real. <laughs> the cops came and they're like, "Ah, sunai ki ya kutte kha rahe koi log." Like they just came confused. Then the angry neighbors were there, and we were like, and we were also very confused. Okay, and we're like, no. And then we took them to the kitchen and we opened the dishes and we said, "This is fish. It is. It's dried fish. What you're smelling is dried fish." And then the cops. They also came and they're like, oh, acha acha, and then uh, then they took a fine from those neighbors and they yeah. left. They say you can't just call people uselessly. This is the khana, yeah. and then just left like that. It was so funny. We're Did you guys <laughs> have a talk with your neighbors after no. that? No, I mean it was not even our neighbors. Apparently, it's neighbors got some visitors who had come. We thought it was hilarious because right in front of us, the cops demanded money from the <laughs> fine. It was so funny. Yeah, when I saw the movie, I assumed like I, I was thinking that okay, how much of it can be true? But yeah, clearly, mm-hmm. you were talking about trolling, and of course, like with it, this whole influencer culture, just generally, you know, content creation slash influencing, it, it's becoming pretty big in India right now, and it's a cutthroat market. In all of that. How do you uh, ensure you know your content stands out? A, do you have to constantly think about that, worry about it, and more importantly, my question is, how do you make friends in this uh, cutthroat competition? I'm probably the wrong person to ask this question because I'm not consistent uh, the way a lot of people are. So I know my visibility suffers because of that because I don't. post stuff constantly and as far as friendships go maybe i'm cynical but i don't think people in influencers who meet on instagram are actual friends mm. <laughs> i just think it's a show to be like to increase each other's followers or whatever mm. i'm just being cynical maybe because all the friends i have made online i know them in person that's why it works and i've seen many fake friendships again from my perspective mm. i think i've become too jaded <laughs> i um, sorry what was the question i'm <laughs> sorry i'm just enjoying the food so <laughs> it's really good though. yeah i was asking in this cutthroat competition mm. um, how do you ensure that your uh, content stands out you don't really have to see it someone else as competition it's it's a it's a healthy space for everyone to grow there's always brands looking for collaborations there's always people looking for other people it's such a huge space but also i consume so much from the internet that sometimes i'm just, um someone's jokes i may hear it somewhere and then it just gets lodged in my subconscious and i think of it and i think that it's my own idea and then i'm so scared that i'll do that because i've done that once yeah 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 you realize that later no someone pointed it out and i was so embarrassed and i deleted my tweet because i made a tweet um and then i posted it and this girl she wrote she's like oh you know i'm disappointed because someone else has said a very similar joke mm. and that's when i realized oh shit yes i saw this And I checked, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, okay." And then I apologized to that girl. I was like, "I'm so sorry." And then I think she felt weird that I was apologizing to her. <laughs> and then, and I just deleted it. It happens, right? Because there are so many things we've had similar experiences with, and that's that's literally relatable content because we've all gone through similar shared histories, similar experiences. 
And a lot of the content is response to what's happening around yeah. you. Yeah, so sometimes you might say something that someone has said before mm. and it, it is a unintentional. So, mm. But even I made one video once which someone else had made but I had not seen her video. But when people pointed it out or deleted my video because if, if, uh, if this thing exists already then I don't want to make the same thing again. So, yeah. And please try this gluten free I'll have some in a while. Yeah. yeah. I'll um I'll have in a while. Oh, no one's interested in gluten-free <laughs> bread, clearly. <laughs> My face has just changed the moment you said gluten. <laughs> it's really good, guys. Give gluten-free a chance. I mean, my cousin has been telling me to go gluten-free. Mm. But is that because of a are you um, allergic to gluten? I'm just being fancy. <laughs> You guys are both working in uh, like as, as two funny women on the internet and otherwise. What's the best thing about your jobs? The best and worst thing up for me is that I'm my own boss. Mm. And I'm an unreliable boss. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, because some, t- some days I'm ultra productive. Mm. Some days I let's take an off and that off lasts for weeks and weeks and weeks. <laughs> so that's the, that's the best and worst thing. But I also said that as a... Funny woman. Mm. What is it? Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm enjoying the food so much that I'm just not paying attention to the conversation. Chew with no, thirty-two times. Really <laughs> yeah, this is really good. Um, the best thing, public validation. Of course. Yeah, because but for a woman, validation do you get even as a man, and you get a lot of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. For the um, bare minimum. That is true. One thing I really like about my Instagram is that I have way more female followers than same, male followers. Same, same. Yeah. And it's nice when girls write to you and say, yes. oh, this is so relatable. I love it. And you know, it's, yeah. it's nice when girls who are much younger than you write to you yeah. and say that they look up to you. Yeah. Like, you know, so. Yeah. It's 70, 30 for me. I love that. Yeah. I wish I could make it 100% someday. Minus 65, 35. So, almost, yeah. Your bio also has something interesting that says uh, <coughs> follow uh, or like to be a content, pop- content, content creator. Content creator. <laughs> creator, yeah. That's who I am actually. I'm not a content creator. I'm a content is that creator. It? Is that why you talk so passionately about rage fueling your content? 100%. 100%. I, I want you to feel the way I feel. And yours is an aspiring cult leader. So please tell us about your cult. How do we join? I I mean, business is slow these days. <laughs> I do want to. I mean, come on. The whole idea of starting a cult is so much fun. You know, you just wear loose, big robes and lots of jewelry. And then you walk around and you say something random. And everyone's like, of course, Guru Ma, That's exactly, you know. You what just, is your cult's SOP? What do you want to do or achieve from it? I just want to be the, have the adoration of people that's I want leader, cult leader. I want to sit, do nothing and just say bakwas and then just earn lots of money as a result of it. I mean, that is the ideal life. Do you guys have any favorite uh, hangouts in Bombay? Like where you guys go to meet, eat? There is a coffee shop in Juhu called Java File. They have this salted caramel coffee. It's so good. I've never had something like that before. Yeah. I really like that ambiance. I, I like that place a lot. I don't know. I end up just going to Leaping Windows, which is very mm-hmm. close to my yeah. house. And you really always like. bump into someone you know there. Mm-hmm. Always, always. Mm-hmm. I've never gone there and not met someone that I don't know, you mm-hmm. know? So it's like the friends, that ce- yeah. Central Park cafe mm-hmm. yeah. and friends, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do like going to friends' houses and then just mm-hmm. chilling there, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's mm-hmm. the best. That's yeah, the that's idea. The yeah. What was the experience of the pandemic? For you guys, were you with your family at that time? I think everybody's repressing those memories I feel <laughs> of those two years, more primarily of 2020. In 2020, uh, I got trolled pretty hard uh, on Instagram, it was really bad uh, to the point where I had some self harm thoughts. Like, because you're cooped up in your room, yeah. you don't have an outlet, you can't go out for a walk. Mm-hmm can't do anything you're already in your thoughts Mm. and um, then stuff like this happens so I took it pretty hard like Mm. it was really bad but I was able to get out of it and make peace with it I think everyone went through all the stages of grief during that year Mm, 
finally when i reached acceptance i started cooking and that's what got me through the first wave mm. what about you manana how mm. was the pandemic experience were you here no i had gone home for a wedding and then got stuck mm -hmm. yeah wedding for 3 weeks and ended up uh, living for 7 months back <laughs> home yeah i was full on having fun back home yeah. because we share a common compound with three other uh, families my cousins you know yeah. so it's literally wake up you do you clean the house blah 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 then you go to this cousin ka ghar and then i chat 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 then you go to this cousin ka ghar so it was just like three families were just visiting each other and then like someone is like let's all have food at my house tonight and then we we'll all we were literally just doing that did the pandemic impact work for you guys and the work i'm sure for you as well yeah uh, i had to leave i left my house mm. and I, i had to shift remotely mm. like i i was in nagaland and i was leaving my ghar because we were like seven months i mean three months had passed and we were like okay the pandemic doesn't look like it's going to be over yeah. and we were my flatmate and i were very sure that we were going to go back to bombay only in 2021 so we're like mm. let's just leave the house mm. and luckily my friends went and they helped shift me out of the mm. place and all of that stuff. Mm. So, yeah, work got affected, but then I I that's when I actively started making lots of videos uh, on the internet. And the, then then I had to eventually come back. Mm. September October I came back because I had to start shooting for something else. Mm. So it was weird to come back to Bombay. Mm. Are you guys working on something like are you at can you tell us a little bit about the projects that you guys are working on? I am writing with a writer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're writing a uh, film together oh wow yeah it's like said it's, mo it's mostly like him taking charge and me piche se following behind but then he decided to call me his co-writer hmm. which is very sweet of him hmm. then you know the videos at the yeah. side yeah. Yeah. yeah and i think i'm shooting for something in october that's what they told me but then <laughs> haven't heard from them since then i'm planning to go to like go back to theater anytime no not really hmm. no not for now yeah i think i think i enjoy being in front of the camera more theater is not easy at all there um but there are quite a few plays that i really love i ended up performing what uh, being one of the members of a play that i love so much really? yeah and it's called it's called the gentleman's club mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um it's about these drag kings in bombay Ooh. yeah wow wow yeah and then i always love that play like i've watched it i had watched it two times already mm -hmm. Then one day one of the uh, cast members just called and said, "Oh yeah, one of the girls is not available. Do you want to come and like fill in for her role?" I'm like, oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm also writing a movie with a writer. Uh, is that the first time you're writing on a movie? Yes, this is the first time I'm writing a movie. I'm very excited. And it's a great experience uh, so far. Trying to actually create um IPs for myself also. Oh my god I play the sims a lot just just wanted to put that out there if you are a simmer <laughs> I am also a simmer that actually I was just going to ask like apart from your real or on stage lives who would you have been if not this oh. and uh, what else do you guys like I would have continued being in a 9 to 5 job yeah. if I didn't ha know any better yeah. and just keep kept doing uh, these wine type videos on the side cuz that's that was my outlet mm. my creative outlet from a boring standard job mm. not that there's anything wrong with a boring standard job just wanted to say that as well mm. had i not seen wake up sid i would probably still be there that happened to me too yeah? wake up sid was had a big influence in my life so also. i think we should thank ayan mukherjee collectively <laughs> thank you ayan if you're watching this you changed at least two like did yeah. he change your life in any way But just like to be <laughs> fair, it also set unrealistic expectations of Bombay for of me. Of course. When I came here, I was like, "Huh? <laughs> What? <laughs> That's not happening." I was from Bombay, so I was like, "Cool, fiction." <laughs> <laughs> What about you? I don't know. I would. I would probably be trying for the civil services. No, no. I think by now, though, I would have. Yeah, the state ka civil services maybe I would have cracked it by now <laughs> because then you give so many exams, right? Uh -huh. Probably married with like two kids. <laughs> mm. Going to office, waking up in the morning packing tiffin for my two children. 
Mm-hmm. Going to office, complaining about my husband, listening to my co-worker complaining about her husband, <laughs> and both shaking our heads. What will happen? Yeah. So, Kya, you also sing sometimes. I love singing. Yeah. Uh, I also, again, I picked that up from my dad. Yeah. Because he is a great singer. He used to be. He still sings, but you know, with age. My sister is an amazing singer. Just yeah. shout out to my sister. <laughs> You're a great singer. Would you also do this thing where you sing and you the the tune is of one song and the lyrics are of another song? How do you do that? <laughs> the other day, uh, that is so aspirational. <laughs> the other day, I went all live. Someone mentioned that they were from Nepal, and I was like, "That's great." Uh, and I remembered the Himalayas. Then I remembered the first guy who climbed uh, Edmund Hillary. Edmund Hillary and um, Tenzing Norgay. Tenzing Norgay. <laughs> And I was like, you know, we should uh, let's read about them, man. I want to know their history. So I uh, went to Edmund Hillary's uh, web- Wikipedia. This is so nice, such great information. We should have been taught this stuff really in school in a better way, uh, in a song maybe. And then I went on YouTube <laughs> and I searched, my heart will go on karaoke. And then I sang about Edmund Hillary <laughs> <laughs> and Tenzing Norgay also. I'm like. I think I don't want to give the white person that much importance. Let's sing about Tenzing Norgay. And I went to his Wikipedia, and I sang about Tenzing Norgay. Do you remember any of it? It was just the Wikipedia page. That's all. It was fun. You have to not take life seriously. Yeah. And that's the fun of it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do any other extracurriculars? ECA. No. <laughs> I'm a below average singer. Bathroom singing mostly. Bathroom singing. Oh, bathroom singing! So it's like I don't sing. It's like I take the shampoo bottle and I'm just like with the Houston, like ah, you know, singing like that in the shower. Yeah. But it's all. Uh, but the, all the sounds are happening inside my head because <laughs> if I sing out loud, <laughs> someone might come sing. Is someone getting murdered? Yeah. What happened? You know. That brings me to uh, almost wrapping up. Uh, these are some quick takes. I'm gonna ask you uh, these questions. You guys, whatever comes pops into your head, tell me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So should I start with you, Supriya? Sure. Let yeah. her eat. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the record, even this was very good. Yeah. So Supriya, Mumbai rains, love or hate? Love if I'm not going outside anywhere that day. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it is what it is. Love hate relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just don't like the way your clothes don't dry. Also, See? my house is tiny. I don't have place to dry clothes. What's your favorite part of Mumbai? Favorite part of Mumbai is Marine Drive. Mm. Love it. I think I like uh, that the whole fort, Kolaba area. Oh, there are some very nice buildings in Kolaba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even Bandra actually. Mm. I like going for walks in Bandra, but there's a chance I might get run over by a car one day because <laughs> I'm just like looking at everything like a mad person. Yeah. Yeah. One thing uh, you love the most about Mumbai and its culture. Love the most about Mumbai. Yeah. The people, and I mean it in the best, like in the way that. Everyone uh, is minding their own business. The way people are very helpful, mm. especially in the trains. I mean, the mm. trains are a nightmare. Mm. But I have been pulled inside trains. I have pulled people inside trains. Mm. But I've also been pushed out of the train. Yeah, of course. So. Yeah, we want. But that was also because they wanted to help you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You wouldn't have been able to otherwise. <laughs> yeah. But it's fun, you know. You, I, I remember once the train was going. And I was trying to get on, and then I didn't know what to do. And then I just made eye contact with this woman, and I did this to her. And then three wow. hands came and just dragged me inside the train. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, the worst thing? Traffic is horrendous, but once the metro is done, I'm praying that it becomes better than what it is right now. The traffic, mm-hmm. yeah, traffic. It's mm-hmm. just yeah. A Mumbai food that you love a lot? Vada pav. Yeah. Any day. So I don't like vada pav. <laughs> I'm not what? a fan. I'm not a fan of Vada Because Same see, here. I lived in Delhi before I came to Bombay, so I was yeah. very disappointed with the street yeah. food. Oh, oh, oh! I uh, love the prawns. Food you wish that Mumbai had? The good Delhi chart. Delhi street food. <laughs> Delhi's food prices also. Yeah. If not a comedian, then what? Probably a kindergarten teacher. I think I would be a really good teacher. I don't know what if I come across as that. I like when young people look up to me. <laughs> so, I would have liked to be a kindergarten teacher. 
even if I were doing a regular job, I would have probably ended up making videos at the side. Mm-hmm. Some some side hustle would have always been there to yeah. let out the creativity, yeah. you know. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. 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 I think that's such a Bombay thing, also. Side hustle. Yeah, everybody you don't have has one their job. Own Everyone yeah. has like everybody has multiple yeah. jobs, yeah. and I I love that about this city. So here's to side hustle. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, both of you, for joining us, and that brings us uh, to wrap up the lunchbox session. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for the food. It's so good. Yeah. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.